Hi everyone, thanks so much for joining me here at the Dahlia Society. My name is Kristen and this channel is all about sewing your own wardrobe, no matter what size or age you are. It's about being creative. We always talk about new pattern releases. Um, I do have a fabric store as well online and I'm here to show you my new makes, a couple of, of things that I've made just this week and also uh, a bit of an unboxing from the July Deluxe Bespoke Box, which is a season box so once a season we have a designer fabric we pick and at the moment circulating around are the brand new bespoke boxes from uh, from July called the Midday Mimosa Mid-Century Modern Boxes so I'm not going to show you that one yet because they are still in the midst of being unveiled and delivered and I'm sure a lot of you won't want to be uh, having your surprise spoiled there so I always like to wait a couple of weeks for that. Before I get started on my makes I wanted to show you an amazing delivery we just had in direct from France and I am so excited to let you guys know that I am one of the very very first stockists of uh, French poetry patterns. Now the beautiful Blandine has entrusted me to become a stocker for her beautifully um, designed paper patterns. And in the past, of course, she has had PDF and over in France, uh, she's released the paper patterns. But the exciting thing about these is she's also released an extended size range. So a lot of these patterns, there'll be two size ranges for. So the one that you might be familiar with is the Pleiades dress. So there's Pleiades one or Pleiades two. And the exciting thing is they start at extra small to extra large. And the second um, size range is extra large to six extra large. So how brilliant is that? I just thought you guys would absolutely love these patterns. Um, they're ones that I've looked at in the past and heard fantastic um, reviews about as well. And the envelopes are just gorgeous as always. With most French patterns we stock in store, we have such great remarks. Now on the back you'll see the line drawings on that. You can do um, different lengths. You've got inverted V bodice, frilly skirt or frill less skirt, shoulder gathers, four sleeves, options and back zipper closures so a fantastic size range on those the other Pleiades pattern is the Pleiades 2 which is the one that you may be also familiar with and same thing we've got the two different size ranges look that one's different okay that one is the one I'm thinking of two different size ranges in that as well and the Pleiades 2 has again uh, long sleeves you can choose a variety of collar and skirt um, and it's got great fabric suggestions on there as well so that is the line drawings on the Pleiades 2 so um, you have such beautiful designs the other one I absolutely love this one only has one size range it's the Leo so you've got extra small to extra large beautiful kind of Victorian looking dress so 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 pretty with boots and tights then we have a very popular pattern that at the moment is only in the extra small to extra large but I think they're working on the extended size range that's the loon that is such a glam dress and you can also go online to the French poetry website and download the free long sleeve hack so if you've already got the loon and you wanted to do the long sleeve version you can do that by downloading the pdf sleeve hack so such a beautiful dress the other one is the Stella, which is a short button down dress above the knee. You can also lengthen it. You've got a drawstring belt. You've got either circle skirt or the Godet skirt. So different type of skirt. Godet, of course, is a really interesting style in the skirt. That is, uh, it fits quite neatly to the hip and flares out. So how amazing is that? So the two different size ranges in those ones as well. So. I'd love to hear your thoughts. I know that you guys are really big fans of French patterns. I think Blandine would be very happy to hear uh, um, how excited we all are to get some more beautiful um, patterns in store like French poetry. Now, before I go any further into my making of this jacket, if you haven't subscribed to the channel and you're watching every week, I would love it if you could do that. And if you enjoy the content here at the Daly Society, don't forget to give this episode a thumbs up. So firstly, let me think, I'll tell you about what I'm wearing because I have had a really big couple of days sewing. Now, I always try and get um, orders boxed up and packed up and Phoebe and I have been really busy doing that in the last couple of days. But I did dedicate a real uh, big day yesterday, full on day, just the whole day of sewing and finishing off this beautiful jacket. 
Now, I really rarely do that anymore. I find that I'm so busy with the store. Um, I'll do sewing in dribs and drabs and it's only when I've got a chance. But this time, I wanted to finish it off and, and get the end result because I was really in the zone. And I don't know if you're like me, but when you're fine, when you're, you've got a pattern that's quite challenging, you need to spend a lot more time really um, getting deep into the pattern and looking at the instructions rather than doing five minutes here and five minutes there. So really happy with how this jacket turned out it was a little bit torturous on the old the old thinking there's a few times I had to scratch the old head and think I am just not getting not getting the uh the instructions aren't sinking in and it was mainly to do with the lining and the technique used for the lining so the Alex coat what can I say other than Italia Jupe have some of the most beautifully designed patterns out there they are one of my most popular um, branded uh, patterns. Uh, they come from Belgium. They are a family owned sisters that actually run it together, do a wonderful job curating fabrics and patterns that go together. Now this fabric is not an Italian jupe fabric because the prints they had in the coating fabric from last year they don't stock anymore but I was so in love with the whole purple vibe from that coat. I wanted to find something similar and I had this beautiful um, kind of a check or plaid wool coating that I picked up on, I think, was it Drapers? Now, I don't know if there is any left online there, but I really wanted to kind of mimic that, the purple, the check vibe they had happening there. And I really loved this fabric. So I went for this, yeah, the wool coating, it's not a really heavy wool coating, this coat would, would be perfect in um, in boiled wool or in boucle or something heavier. Um, you know, a lovely coating or fleece fabric and it is a woven pattern. It does say it is an advanced pattern and you can really see some of the technique involved in making this coat, why they would say that. I had a real vision of this. I wanted to have the magenta lining as well, which I'm really, really thrilled with. And the end result for me is just a beautifully fitting coat. Now, patterns I normally do about a size 44, but I've, I looked at the finished measurements and I thought there looked like there was plenty of ease in this so I went down to a 42 and I'm really really happy I did I felt quite confident doing that when I saw how much uh, room was around the bust and around the waist and there was quite a bit of ease there so I knew that if I hadn't made a size bigger I sometimes can feel very swamped around the shoulders and neck area so I wanted to be careful with that so and I, I really thought I wasn't going to be wearing it buttoned up I'll be wearing it undone um, I can still button it up but to me, wearing this layered throw over a pair of jeans and a sweater is, is what I was wanting it for. And you can see I've just got a ready-to-wear sweater underneath. It's not a real bulky sweater, but it's it's in between knit and there is plenty of room. One thing I must say that I always do is I always take a good 10 centimeters out of the arm length because whenever I've made coats in the past, I have had the longest arms ever. My arms are fairly short, they're not long. So I also knew that I felt quite confident taking that 10 centimeters from the length and shorten line in the arm but yeah don't forget you have to do it with a lining as well so everything matches up perfectly now this pattern has a quite a lot of pieces so yeah this this actual pattern itself i am uh, i should be in stock this week by the time this video comes out it may be in even in store i had purchased mine a few weeks back and um a zero had it printed out so if you're wanting the printed version they are re-released and back in store. So that is wonderful to know. Um, this uh, particular pattern, the Alex coat, let me tell you about it. It has got yeah, quite a bit of ease, as I was saying. There's quite a few, few pieces. There is a beautiful kind of princess seam through the middle sections. There's a really lovely angled pocket that is lined as well. It has these amazing lapels that just came together like a dream. Uh, the thing with this is that you need to dedicate a bit of time to making sure things like your notches are marked and by that I mean tailor's tacks are the best way to do to get a really seamless collar finish because without those tailor's tacks I don't think that would have come out as clean as it did. So really, really happy with that. Taylor's tax for where your button and pockets are situated is also a great one. So a little bit of thread there tied off so you're not marking your coating fabric. 
the um, the arms as I took some some length off the arms, but that was about all the adjustments I made. Um, and now with the, I would say the general construction of the coat was really really simple. I just flew through it and I and I tried it on before the lining, and I thought, this is feeling amazing already. Really really happy with the fit, perfect size. So that's whew, once you get that done, it's uh, it's yeah, it feels great to know that you haven't just completely wasted your time on a pattern that's ginormous because. Sometimes it's not as easy as just taking up hems. Once things are really big fitting, especially around shoulders, it can be very hard to, to fine tune and take things in without ruining the style. Got it all sewn up. I just did it on my regular old faff machine, my uh, heavy duty machine, and yeah, really, really happy with how it came up. You've got the panel sleeves, so you've got the two piece sleeves, which are always a wonderful fit. Whenever you have a coat or blazer with that kind of um, seam lines through it, the sleeves, you know that you're gonna have plenty of room there and it gives a nice shape. Um, what my problem was, was I got to the lining stage, had it all ready to go, made the lining up, um, had a read of the instructions and thought, well, this, this looks tricky. There's a vent at the back of this jacket and it does say that there is an online tutorial on the blog on Natalia Jeep you can follow along. So you're getting step-by-step -step pictures, takes you through. When it got to the vent, I must admit, I was really scratching my head trying to figure out going between the instructions uh, on my pattern and going back to the blog post, I think I overly confused myself. And when I actually went to turn it inside out, you do leave a lining piece in the inside of the arm unstitched. And I did think there's not an awful lot of hand stitching in this. It's very, very cleanly finished. Um, I'm not used to that. I normally, when I make a blazer, I normally find that I'll hand stitch the one particular part of the lining. I'm just thinking, hmm, something, is giving me a funny feeling that this is not going to be as simple as I once thought. So when I went to flip it inside out through that um, the lining hole, I flipped it inside out and it, it wasn't coming out properly. It was all still joined up to the arms. It was like, you know, when you feel the your heart just sink and you think, oh my goodness, all this work and I have really stuffed something majorly up uh, with the instructions here. So I thought I could go back to the drawing board and pull it all apart and go through instructions again. And I thought, or I could listen to my gut and go with what I know uh, as far as putting a lining in. I have made many line blazers before and never had a lot of trouble. Um, this is a different technique used and it looks so perfectly cleanly finished but I, I felt that I would probably get a better result to go back and redo the vent and maybe hand stitch the, uh, the lining to the hem line. So that's what I did. I actually unpicked the lining on the hem, flipped it inside out, fixed it all up there. Then I went and hand pinned all the hem, got my hem perfectly um, measured and then I hand stitched that hem, the blind stitch, and then I actually hand stitched the lining uh, to the top of that and left that bit of ease there. Then I went inside and tacked the shoulders, the seams, the collars together, things like that. It, it does give really great precise instructions. It's just that lining bit, something went wrong and I just didn't have the patience to go back and try and do it how they uh, the ladies had set out uh, with the pattern instructions there. But in the end, I'm really happy with the result. I went with how I knew um, how, to, how to get it done and I think uh, that was good for me because I think if I had it unpicked it and started again, I think I was just confusing myself a bit too much and I would have, wouldn't have enjoyed uh, completing it as much as I did and in the end without a bit of hand stitching and slowing myself down, um, you know, but that bit of couture work sometimes is all you need um, when you know it's going to turn out well. I knew the fit was great. I just knew that the lining technique for me wasn't uh, wasn't going to work. But I'd love to hear your thoughts. Have you made the Alex coat? What did you think about um, your light, the lining technique? Were you happy with it or did you prefer to go back to a technique that you've used before? I think it is a sort of pattern that with that lining instructions, it is such a clean, clean finish um, and that it really does alleviate anything like hand sewing, hand stitching. But for me, I was quite happy to hand stitch and get it looking exactly how I wanted. So I'm thrilled with it. I absolutely love it. Even after all the trials and tribulations of the back vent and having issues with the lining, I still would go back and make another one because I think the fit of it is just superb. I'll put some pics up and some video and you can see what you think about the Italian Jeep Alex coat.
I am really thrilled with the fit and I now know why this, I can't believe this is my first Italia Jude pattern that I've made. Even after, uh, you know, being one of the most popular patterns in the store, I can really see why people love their pattern. They have such a beautiful style element. They are having amazing uh, success with their collections and their patterns. And I think having them together really does help inspire you and you can see fabric and patterns, how they come together. Uh, great size range and really good instructions yeah but that this is as I say it's an advanced pattern I would not recommend it if you were a beginner I would definitely recommend it if you were intermediate and you wanted something more challenging to get your teeth into because the instructions are great uh, if you're like me and you know that, that you like a certain lining method and it goes against what maybe what you've taught yourself in the past it can be a little bit baffling but things like um yeah things like back those that back vent um yeah that isn't quite but it's not a, not a thing you normally do a lot in sewing. It's it's one of those techniques that you probably once you've learned to do it, you'll always remember it. Um, but the pockets themselves were a brilliant, uh, a lovely, lovely style. I really like an angled pocket, so very happy with how the coat has come up. Now I'm going to talk about the beautiful jewel of the Nile box we had uh, for our seasonal bespoke box. This was the amazing Lady McElroy uh, Cobra Corsage fabric. Now you either got to choose the Peridot uh, green or the amethyst purple. I had extra fabric of the purple so I had to make something purple up. So I made this amazing dress. Now I wanted something floaty and ethereal looking. I wanted to look a bit like a Egyptian goddess maybe you could say. <laughs> and I needed to have something with a v-neck. I really envisaged a, a v-neck and a big voluminous sleeve. So a pattern that I'd seen in the past from an indie, indie pattern designer was called Coffee and Thread. Uh, and the Marique dress is what I went for. And I am so thrilled with this. This is actually going to be a dress I'm going to be wearing to my niece's wedding next month. And I think it'll be amazing. I love the the snakes or asps, uh, beetles, the beautiful uh, floral design, the moth butterflies. It's just a dream to sew with as Lady McElroy fabrics usually are. This is a jelly viscose fabric. And uh, I know that they do have other bases. They have uh, the Marley Cotton Lawn. They've also got the Scuba Jersey, which I had in a black and it just walked out the door so fast. But this is just amazing. And I'm, I'm gonna try and get more of this fabric because I know you guys will love these colors as well. It is quite roomy. I found around the shoulders, especially. It's got a quite a low V neck, which is just beautiful to wear. And the standout feature of this, of course, is this amazing sleeve. It has got a lot of fabric in that sleeve. You can see there a lot of uh, that balloon kind of sleeve is just amazing to wear. It looks so beautiful on. I use the elasticated wrist method because I knew that with my arms not being overly long, if I made that beautiful deep cuff on the other version, I was going to have issues um, getting that right length, but I love it so much. It is just such a beautiful design, that lovely deep cuff and that um, that lovely voluminous puffy sleeve. So that's definitely one I'd like to make again and maybe even in the blouse version, you could do that. I added a tie at the waist to give a little bit of waist definition, but I just love it over a pair of boots. It's floaty, very glam. Um, yeah, so I'd love to hear your thoughts on this dress. This is the Marique by Coffee and Thread. And we use some little rosy cheek labels. I'm going to show you that up close. I just think they were beautifully glitz and glam. So that's creativity never goes out of style. And that's a very um, kind of jewel of the Nile theme, I would say. Um, the other goodies in the bespoke box that we had were some amazing chocolate honeycomb shards by Melbourne company called The Chocolate Box. That was our edible gift. We had some really lovely berry tea for our scented gift, we had this gorgeous soap that we had especially made for our Jewel of Nile boxes. And these are from Florally Soapery and I just love, uh, we had a little bee done with a little wax seal and then we had the Jewel of the Nile. So we had the theme throughout the box and I think it just matched so, so perfectly. The other 
sewing notion gift that we always try and have with our bespoke boxes was with the deluxe boxes we had uh, have handmade buttons and these are from rhubarb makes and she made these especially for my lovely customers to match this fabric now these are i think there's 10 buttons in all and they match the fabric beautifully as well so i think they'd be gorgeous on the marique dress cuff the deep cuff if you wanted to do buttons now this gold is incredible i'm gonna show it up close so you can see if you can see that they are just amazing really picking up the light there so it's just so lovely to have some handmade goodies um, sewing notions and also got the Goodman thread which is uh, a nice matching purple or Herodot green so it's really nice when you have put a lot of time and effort into thinking about you know something you, you, you've been out of your comfort zone for making especially things like coats and jackets I always like to make sure that I make a couple of coats um, I shouldn't say a couple of at least one coat a year because they are things that I wear. I love layering things. I also like simple jackets and that's another thing I'm in the middle of cutting out is a Maison Faux Sunset jacket. Very different look to this, a bit more casual with zip up the front, but lined again. So quite, I'd say maybe not quite as intense as this jacket as advanced, but maybe in the middle somewhere. But I love that um, it's something you can throw on over a t-shirt or a pair of jeans. Um, so I think the thing with me is just trying to step back and think it is just a set of instructions. If you take away the you know, intermediate advanced level of sewing things and think back that everything is step by step, take it slowly, read the instructions, look for sew alongs, look for blog posts, anything to help with a visual thing like that. It really does help. I uh, also like to look on YouTube if there's been anyone else making it, what they've had to say about the pattern. There wasn't a lot of info with this particular Alex coat out there. There wasn't uh, many that I could see. I also like to look at images sometimes and see if people have made certain patterns, how they found things like sizing. Try and get as much information as you can before you dive in, but definitely don't overthink it. Um, yeah, anyone can really make any pattern if they put their mind to it. I think it doesn't matter how, how many years of experience you've had. I think as long as you have uh, the right mentality and, and, and really pick apart a pattern, read it through, uh, and absorb it and just take it slowly step by step and if you do make a mistake there's always ways around things you can always find maybe your own little method or little take on on something that if you if you know a better way it can be done but i would always read through to the end of the pattern before i start switching things around because it can really muck you up if you if you think it's going to go a certain way and you do your own you do your own little method and you read further on i think i shouldn't have done that because now it's much this part up or that part up. So you can tackle any pattern out there. It's just all about the, the way you think about it, but definitely is such an amazing feeling when you can make um, something that's fully aligned, like a couture style garment that will, will fit your body perfectly. And that's one thing I do find when I'm, I'm looking for coats and blazers in store. If I remember trying things on, I, I find that I can't get the fit right. Either the shoulders are too big and the waist is too narrow or, or vice versa. So it's so nice to know you can tailor something and make it your own size. I'd love to hear your thoughts. What do you think about these patterns? Let me know also what you're sewing this week. Are you sewing for the winter season like we are here in Australia or are you sewing for summer? There's so many beautiful new summery dress patterns coming out I'm really really missing uh, whipping up dresses because I do know how you know it's so lovely and fast to whip a dress up sometimes in winter things maybe seem a bit more involved because there's more um, more steps and more layers to it but I really do enjoy making winter layering garments it's just such a satisfying thing to do now next month's bespoke box while we before we get to the unveiling of the midday mimosa i'm going to touch on a bit about that now in august our theme will be uh it'll be a under the sea kind of neptune's daughter slash mermaid slash siren um mythology that kind of thing that is the theme we're going for so it's really really uh, exciting uh, i'm going to bit, put a bit of um imagery from john William Waterhouse the artist that I, I do love a lot of his artwork um, there's so many beautiful ones but this really captured us and we, we thought we'd put this as our image for next month um, so if you love something a bit 
um, yeah, a bit oceanic, let's say. I think you're going to enjoy next month's box. So the decals for that box will be in the next video. It's usually second Sunday of each month, 7 p.m. here in Australia. And the boxes are really, really becoming quite popular. So I'm trying to um, up the numbers a little bit slowly. Uh, if we can, it is getting harder to find fabric in that much quantity. The same style, I always like to keep it the same pattern, same color, so that's really exciting. I'll leave you with that. Thank you so much for joining me here today at the Daly Society and I will chat to you all very soon. Take care and bye for now.